The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Welcome to Grace in Focus. So glad you've joined us today. We're looking at the life of the Old Testament prophet Jonah, a quite reluctant prophet. If you want to know more about this podcast, this radio broadcast, this ministry, Grace in Focus, our website is www.faithalone.org. I'll tell you more about us at the end of the program. Right now, we're in the latter part of Jonah chapter 1, and we're going to see God's sovereignty at work. Jonah witnessing to the sailors and being thrown into a very stormy sea. Here's Bob Wilkin and Dave Renfro with today's discussion. Hello, Grace in Focus audience. I'm here again with my friend David Renfro, the Hebrew scholar extraordinaire, the right reverend David R. Renfro. Shalom to you, too. Shalom, (laughs) y'all. Yeah, shalom, y'all. Yeah. I'm from southern Israel. Oh, good. <laughs> You're from the Negev. All right, we ended last time in Jonah chapter 1, and 117 basically introduces chapter 2. In fact, right. it's probably a bad chapter break, right? Yeah, I think so. All right, let me read 117, and then you can uh, comment on it, and we'll move into chapter 2. Now, the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, which is quite important in the words of Jesus, because he uses this to refer to his own resurrection. By the way, in the Jewish concept, three days and three nights doesn't mean exactly 72 hours, right? Right. Any part of a day would be a day and a night, and so it's... Three days, he's in the belly of the fish, but not necessarily 24 hours in the first and last days. So what is this great fish? Is this, we always talk about a whale. Was it necessarily a whale? In my research, uh, scholars have tried to figure out what in the world this thing was. Some people think it's some kind of whale. It's also, I think in Matthew 12, it's called a sea monster. And if it's that, then... In the ancient Near East, most of the peoples had this idea of this word you've heard before, Leviathan. Right. And it's a sea monster of some kind that nobody's ever seen, <laughs> maybe. So maybe something came up from the depths. Right. Swallowed it. It could be. The other possibility, which some commentators don't don't go along with, is the Lord created it out of nothing for this specific purpose. That is a possibility. Yeah, it is. There's no way to be sure, so I'm not going to be dogmatic on it. But, but God's certainly capable of doing that. I think he's proven <laughs> more than once that he's capable of doing that. Obviously, it's a fish large enough to swallow a human being. We do know that. Right. And we don't know if he dies or doesn't die when he goes in the fish, right? That's going to be this psalm of Jonah is going to give us some hints, Right. I think so. Uh, Yeah, some people have speculated that at some point, maybe toward the end of the three days, three nights, he actually did physically die. But we don't know. I mean, there's nothing in the text that gives us a sign one way or the other. But we are told that in chapter 2 and verse 1, then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the fish's belly. And so Jonah's alive. Sometime during the time. Sometime during during those three days. And he prays, and we're told what he prays. Right. And this is what you're calling the Psalm of Jonah, right? I call it the Psalm of Jonah. It goes from verses 2 through 8 in chapter 2. Okay, so he says, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol, I cried, and you heard my voice. Now, Sheol is the place of the dead, right? It's a grave. It's essentially the grave. What I think Jonah is saying is, when the guys on the ship threw me overboard... I expected to drown. But look what the Lord did. He Out of the belly of Sheol, the grave, you heard my voice. And it was like what Jonah is saying is, as he was being thrown overboard or floating in the water about to die, he was praying to the Lord. He was as good as dead. He was as good as dead because, you know, the, the waves are still extremely high and dangerous and fatal if you stay there long enough. So really, for God to to send this great fish to swallow Jonah was an act of salvation. It saved his life. Yeah, and he does say that, doesn't he, in chapter 2, later in uh, chapter 2? Yeah, he. in other words, he was delivered from drowning. Yeah. I think that's what he's talking about there. You cast me into the deep, 
into the heart of the seas, verse 3, and the flood surrounded me, all your billows and waves passed over me. In other words, you know, the Lord was still causing this storm. And even though the Lord caused the storm, in the midst of that storm, he saved Jonah. But now, when he gets thrown into the sea, the sea becomes calm. So is it that it became calm instantly, but Jonah is not experiencing that? He's still experiencing this turbulence. Mm -hmm. Or when it says the sea became calm, there was some period of time between the time he hit the water and the time it calmed. Yeah, and there's no indication how long that was, but I'm thinking it wasn't more than a minute or two, maybe. Right. I don't know. But I think when Jonah hit the water, it was still very, very nasty. And that's what he's talking about I think here. I think, yeah, because the whole point of him being thrown overboard was a death sentence. Yeah, and notice he says, then in verse 4, I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Now, look, he's the one that fled. Right. But now he says, I've been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. Mm-hmm. He's th- looking to Jerusalem. And he's looking to the place where the presence of the Lord is most evident, even though he's been fleeing from the presence of the Lord. Most commentators here take verse 4, you know, since he's here in the middle of the fish, that, um, you know, he can't see anything. Right. So when he says, I look again to your holy temple, they're talking about continued prayer. Yeah. Looking toward the temple, which is the presence of the Lord is in the temple when the Lord lived amongst his people back then. Right. So this is a poetic way of saying, I'm going to keep on praying. So then he says, the waters surrounded me, even to my soul, the deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains, the earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord, my God. What's he talking about with the moorings and the mountains and the weeds that have wrapped around him? Well, notice he mentions the deep. Yeah. You you go underwater, that's the base of the mountains that come out of the water, the islands and such, which are the tops of mountains, essentially. Right. I think that's what he's talking about, the deep. Oh, by the way, the deep is the same word as used in... uh, Genesis 1, 2, the Spirit of God moved across the deep. Ah. And it's the same word. The you know? face of the deep, and, yeah. And the, the Hebrew word is tahom, and I believe that's yet another one of those pagan gods that the pagans worship. Wow. Back then. So I think what Jonah is saying here is there was no hope for me surviving this. He's using a lot of poetic imagery to say there was no hope. And the, he says, yet you have brought me up my life from the pit. That's right. And so whether he died and was brought back or whether he was spared, which it sounds like he's saying he was spared, God with this great fish, this Leviathan or this Loch Ness monster, whatever Whatever, it was, has been used by God to save his life. Yes, exactly. And then he says, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. So again, he's talking about that he came back to his right mind. Yeah, the fact that he says, I remembered the Lord. One of my professors wrote an article about the word remember, and it's used all over the Old Testament. And he makes a very good case for the fact that in a lot of contexts, the word remember is a worship word. I would love to see that in our churches. Why don't we just sit for a minute and remember what the Lord has done for us in our lives? So verse 8, those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. And here's the word salvation or deliverance. Salvation or deliverance is of the Lord. When it says those who regard worthless idols, literally in Hebrew, that's empty vanities. It's stuff that doesn't survive. I'm so glad we don't have vanity things in our lives. Uh, We don't? No. Uh, (laughs) Current day Christians never, never think of other things as more important than the Lord. Never. No. No. No, no. We have our own version of that. And by the way, this reference to salvation is of the Lord. He's obviously talking about physical salvation, but it would also probably have a sense of all deliverance, including eternal salvation, I agree. is of the Lord, right? I agree. I think all kinds of salvation, whether it be rescue, physical healing, preservation of one's physical life, all of that 
is because of the Lord himself. He's yeah. Because he, as we learned in the, our series on the plagues of Egypt, he is the Lord of life and death. Yeah. He is the sovereign one that controls life and death, health and sickness and all of that. Recognition of his sovereignty of that area, I think, is key for our faith. And notice he ends chapter 2 with the words, So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. I love that imagery, don't you? It didn't say that the fish, you know, just kind of went uh, boing. You know, uh, <laughs> boing? But, but, but it, it's, he vomited Jonah It's more out. like, bah! Like, <laughs> I am sick to my stomach. And I, I think that's very interesting. The Lord spoke to the fish. What attribute of the Lord does that kind of portray? His sovereignty. Right, but also the fish can understand yeah, and the obey. Fish, the fish obeys. Some people have said that it's not likely at this point that the fish was quite yet at land. I mean, maybe it was, but isn't it possible that the Lord has transported that fish rather quickly? Because they've gone a long way in this three days. Mm -hmm. Can a fish swim that fast? I mean, I don't know how far they were toward Tarshish, and I don't know how far it was to Nineveh, but it was a long distance, you know, hundreds of miles. What I read is Nineveh is 550 miles from Samaria, which is inland. My, nobody knows where the fish vomited up Jonah. Right. But my hunch is it's back in Israel. And then from there, Jonah makes the long trek, either on camel or donkey or whatever, which probably would have, what I read, it would have taken him a month to get wow. to, to Nineveh. But the fact that he went to Nineveh is the key. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter how long it takes him to get there. As long as he's going the direction the Lord wants him to go. Right. So God has accomplished what he wanted, and we're now going to have uh, the reluctant prophet is going to get 2.0. His, he's going to get another calling, and he's going to obey this time. Right. All right. Well, keep grace in focus. Thank you, guys, for that great discussion. Are you interested in finding other Free Grace believers just like yourself in your area? Well, you can do that by going to our website, faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. On our website, we have a church tracker. It's an easy-to-use map that will help you locate those other Free Grace churches that might be in your area. So come visit us at the website and take advantage of our free church tracker. It's at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. There are a lot of costs involved in staying on the air. That's why we so much appreciate our financial partners. If you'd like to learn how to become one, you can find out more by going to faithalone.org. We would love to hear from you. Maybe you've got a question, comment, or some feedback. If you do, please don't hesitate to send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next Grace in Focus, Jonah gets delivered from that stormy sea by a very unlikely sea monster. Be sure to join us. This is the Grace Evangelical Society. Until next time, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.